Hey you guys, welcome to the Dr. G Show. Uh, tonight is episode 156 and we're talking about uh, food additives and kind of how to read labels. So we did this live at the um, OptiLife uh, gym just um, last week, last Thursday. And I couldn't, I, I forgot my little cord for my uh, uh, phone so we couldn't do the live one. So we're gonna do a little bit of that that was a couple hours but so today we're gonna just kind of spend a little bit of time looking at some labels talking about chemical toxicity and kind of what are we eating what are we drinking and looking at it uh, quite a bit of let's say a, a very different way here and it should become to no one's surprise that America is consuming like horribly processed foods um, so uh, we'll go through a myriad of things tonight, but if you guys have ingredients too that you guys want to talk about, let me know. Uh, we're not covering like makeups and lotions, but some of those chemicals are going to be in the things that we talk about today anyways. But if you have ones that you're not sure of, let me know. Um, and I want to hear your guys' feedback as we go through this too. I, I was looking to try to get the newest stats and it said that Okay, so 26% of the American diet now is sugary products, which we'll talk about all the 50 different names for sugar, right? And then about 20% is drinks, again, processed stuff, not water. Uh, so like Gatorade and, and Powerades that are horribly toxic, let alone sodas and stuff. 16% is basically cereals and crap. And so uh, we'll actually look through, I think one, one cereal, Sugar Smacks, uh, and talk about that and then we have fruits and vegetables which is like again the thing that reverses all disease so the American typical American will consume about 2,000 pounds of food a year um, which is 75% more than they need and of those fruits and vegetables it's only like 15% but it's processed highly processed the American Cancer Association said that if you eat um, was it uh, five servings of fruits and vegetables back in the 80s uh, it prevents 85% of all cancers, even 75% smokers. So that's awesome. Fruits and vegetables, just simple, cheap, easy things, right? But out of our diet now, of those 2,000 pounds of food a year we eat, 15% are fruits and vegetables, but they're highly processed. So we're talking about vegetables that are corn chips and french fries, and uh, instead of fruit, we're drinking juices. So uh, we end up just getting the worst part of those. And then about... 10% of the diet's dairy and then processed meats which again we said that because they glue together meat we use nitrates and the World Health Organization says that American processed meat is now more likely to cause cancer than smoking cigarettes yay we did it um, and then when we look at meat and fish and eggs eggs eh, fine uh, fish is mostly corn stuff the corn eggs and the corn meats so they feed them corn. So then they're 40 times more inflammatory than uh, anti-inflammatory meats. So it's not really meat that causes the problem so much about what the meat eats. And we've talked about that before. So when you look at that, um, those 2,000 pounds of food that Americans typically eat, we should all be sick, fat, and dumb. We really should. And of course, that is our population now. You know, we went from the smartest country in the world to now one of the dumbest countries. We went from healthy, skinny, like normal country till uh, 1910, we started gaining weight. By 1940s, we created type two diabetes. And then that was only achievable by adults by about 35 years. And then we created insulin dependent adult, then pediatric uh, uh, in, non-insulin dependent, and then pediatric insulin dependent, and then type three diabetes in 2010 which was uh, brain diabetes, so kind of mimicking Alzheimer-ism. And then we have a new thing, which is uh, the skinny type two diabetic, which again was amazing because we've never been able to achieve that in history, and now we can do it with just fortitude. So we are like the best uh, at causing these problems now. And if you look globally, I mean, we are the leaders that cause this, and then where we export our food, we then see those populations having the same problems. So whereas like China and, and uh, uh, Japan were some of the thinnest populations on earth, now they're seeing uh, obese children. So if you do what we do, you'll get what they got. 
So a big part of reading labels is to stop falling into that trap as an American. Stop eating and drinking things that cause cancer, that cause diabetes, that cause heart disease. And that's your easiest way to solve most problems. So, pretty crazy. And especially, one of the coolest things you can ever do when it comes to like weight gain, because we always feel like, well, everybody's just kind of fat and that's chubby, that's how it is. But look up CDC, CDC um, Weight Gain Map US or something like that. It's actually called The Prevalence of Obesity Among US Adults. And it'll start out, I think, in the year 2000 and there's only a couple places where a couple states where there's some overweight people then the colors start getting darker each year and they add in new categories of bc so they have greater than 30 percent which never existed and then they have greater than 35 that never existed and i'm sure we have a higher one now but you can see year by year how the weight gain just explodes in the united states so it's we did this we did this so all right, I'm gonna try a few things here. I'm gonna to try to see if I can face the camera towards the screen so you guys can see what we saw, or see what we see. And I need to make sure that, uh, I gotta find this one in my list here. <laughs> All right, and if you guys have labels too, let me know. Um, oh, these are double-sided, okay. I think it's this one then. Yep. All right. All right. So let's see how well we can do this here. Um, let's go this direction. And then we will see how well we can do this here. That looks upside down. Is that right? All right. Let's see here. That looks backwards. All right, let me fix this. There we go. Okay, so I think that'll work. So I'm gonna use my mouse here so we can see this. So this is, uh, if you can see down here, it's uh, at the bottom, it's Centrum. Uh, so it's Centrum Silver Adults. So this is by Pfizer, uh, it's, and it's made by um, Walmart and, and sold by Walmart. And so when you look up here, again, most people don't need multivitamins, um, but if you're gonna take a multivitamin, take something that's actually healthy and non-toxic. So most multivitamins are pretty low dose anyways. Uh, if you look at this, it's calcium carbonate. Uh, calcium carbonate only absorbs 22%, so of that small calcium amount that's in here, those 200 milligrams, you're only getting one fifth of that, which is ridiculous, right? So that's not real. And then potassium chloride is not the healthier version of that. Same with the mag oxide. Typically we want citrates, but then it gets really sketchy uh, once we get to here. And so, I was trying to see, mine is, That's a little bit blurred on there. Okay, so let's get to, let's get look over here. So we have beta carotene, and then we have BHT. And this BHT, you will see that in cereal, in almost all gums at the regular grocery store. And that's butyl hydrotoluene. So this is one of those uh, like TBHQ ones, BHAs. That T is toluene, which is paint thinner. So the way that you make paint thinner is from benzene, and benzene is the flammable part of gasoline that we ca know causes leukemia and lymphomas. So we can take the flammable part of gasoline, make paint thinner, and then add a tiny little bit in food as a cheap ass preservative so we can make some more money. So this BHT is one of those that you just wanna throw this thing away right then, but it gets better, i.e. worse. So then if you look at like tocopherol, tocopherol should be good. To, you know, vitamin E is this like eight things. So it's four, think of like eight Legos put together. You have four tocotrienols and four tocopherols. And here we see the word tocopherol. 
Well, legally, you can take one eighth of a vitamin E and make it synthetically and sell it back to people as vitamin E, but it's not. It's one eighth vitamin E. So what they did was something even worse here. So they made something called DL alpha tocopherol. So not only is this one eighth vitamin E, but this DL actually makes this thing so toxic that it can increase the risk of heart disease and cancer. So years ago, there was a study that came out and it said that uh, vitamin E high doses causes cancer and heart disease which of course is ridiculous. But when you looked at the study, it wasn't vitamin E that they used, it was DL tocopherol. And so in supplements, you'll see the word D in front of stuff. So like D ribose, right? You'll see the word L in front of stuff like uh, L lysine. And what that means is that that spins either left or right on its double axis. So just kind of a nerdy, you know, biochemistry thing. But dextro is right in Latin and levo is left in Latin. So it either spins right or spins left. But this little bastard spins both ways, which is not how vitamin E works in nature. So we created this uh, one eighth vitamin E uh, that doesn't occur in nature and then causes cancer and heart disease. And then we blame vitamin E. And then over here, you see the DL again. And then we have FDNC. And FDNC means food and drug and cosmetic approved by the FDA. So FDNC. So you won't always see all of those, but if it's food, drug, and cosmetic approved. So this is blue food coloring. And we know the studies in 2010 show that blue food coloring uh, decreases brain neurite growth by 5,000%. So, this actually dumbs people down with this multivitamin, but you'll see that in all kinds of products. The yellow research shows decreases brain growth by 3,000%. It literally causes attention deficit disorders and learning disorders, uh, even can cause uh, retardation in pregnant moms uh, of, of animals in the study. So, we're causing cancer, we're preserving with paint thinner, and we're using colors that mess up the brain. So off to a pretty good start here. And then we have folic acid. And just, you know, a little caveat is you really want folate, you really want methylfolate, but folic acid actually tends, the synthetic form, tends to cause problems. So long term, you really want to try to get away from folic acid, really doing folate. And then our gelatin that you see here, gelatin is just animal carcass. You'll see that in lots of supplements. And so basically you just take an animal, take all his meat away, grind him up, and then you got gelatin, which is what you make jello from. Gelatin, jello, right? And the glucose here is uh, gonna be from corn. So if you dissolve corn in acid, you get 50% glucose, 50% uh, fructose, and then you can sell those as derivative products. So the glucose in this is genetically modified sugar, GMO. And then over here we have more, uh, let's see, we have colors. Over here we have polydextrose, which means many sugars, which what the hell is that, right? So polydextrose is just genetically modified corn, most likely. And then we have polyethylene glycol because nothing really rounds out a good old fashioned product like uh, <laughs> antifreeze. If you take the poly off, ethylene glycol is the antifreeze that will kill you, like straight up kill you. So propylethylene is 50% of your antifreeze. That's a good preserver that won't, that won't kill you right away, but it's made from petroleum. Um, and then ethylene glycol is the other 50% of your um, antifreeze in your car that'll kill you. So this is one of those things where you see like frosty, you know, frosties are polyethylene glycol. They will straight up never go bad. Uh, you can leave them in your car all week and you're fine. Throw it in the freezer on Friday, you got frosty time again. So Wendy's frosties don't 
don't end up becoming ice cream because they're not really ice cream. They are soft serve, which is propylethylene glycol, just like Dairy Queen does. So anything that says soft serve, it's, uh, it's got antifreeze in it. So it gets even better here because <laughs> we have this thing called uh, uh, PVA, polyvinyl alcohol. So think of like vinyl records, melting it down in alcohol solution, and then of course putting in supplements and then selling that. Seems like a great idea. I know, right? But horribly toxic. In fact, um, I always tell this story that I was on the plane to go uh, lecture in Baltimore um, for a post-grad seminar, and the front page of the USA, USA Today health section said that um, in Salt Lake City, Utah, they have to remove a half a ton of undigested supplements from the sewer system every month to prevent it from clogging up. And when they did a close-up on the pills, you could still see the word Pfizer on the pill, which means that pill went through that mouth, through the digestive system, out their butt, into the sewer, and never took the name off the pill. And so they're all freaking out because they're like, how is that even possible? But I'm laughing because I'm like, you don't break down alcohol, or sorry, you don't break down vinyl. You don't break down some of these things. And then of course we have uh, potassium iodide. Now you really don't want to take iodine. Uh, you want to eat things that have iodine in there. And so iodine is plants and fish from the ocean or real actual sea salt. So this can actually mess up somebody with their uh, thyroid issues. We've got a little silicone in there because you know nothing's uh, better than a little sand in your food. And then we got sodium benzoate. And benzoate is from Benz, which is from benzene. The only good Benz is a Mercedes Benz. Otherwise, you're probably consuming alcohol or, uh, sorry, gasoline. So with the benzoate, you'll see that as uh, benzoic acid in food and drinks, but you'll see it in sodium benzoate or potassium benzoate. That benz is a big problem because that's the flammable part of gasoline that works as a cheap ass preservative so they can make a little bit more money while they're poisoning you. And then over here we have starch, which is uh, probably genetically modified corn, sucrose, which is genetically modified corn, and then titanium dioxide, which isn't great, but you'll still see those. And then here you see the tocopherol without the DL. Zinc oxide, so the crappier version of that. So, horribly toxic stuff there. So that's great. That's, that's one of ours. Any questions about that? That's pretty messed up. Then we have another one that's a little bit uh, similar here. Uh, this is another supplement. And you can see a lot of the same things here. So cellulose, typically when you see that, think uh, that is the plant fiber that we don't break down for energy. That's why cows can eat grass and get sugar from it, uh, but people can't because we lost the ability to break down cellulose so we don't make cellulase. So typically this should have been from plant debris, but most likely it's just from sawdust. And we have our starch, which starches are just uh, a little bit uh, like a group of sugars put together. So that's sugar. We got a little sand. So we got uh, sawdust, animal fat, sugar, sand. So that's pretty good. Then we have our BHA and BHT. Again, paint thinner, genetically modified corn, DL tocopherol. So that's back to same thing. Um, we're back to causing heart disease, cancer, gelatin, which is from animal carcasses, which, you know, then you have your cellulose and your cellulose and uh, mag sterate, maltodextrin, which is sugar plus sugar plus sugar from genetically modified corn, mannitol, which is probably derived from a sugar alcohol from corn. And that, here's your PEG, polyethylene glycol, right? Antifreeze, that's the other way we say it. And then we have polyvinyl alcohol again here, sucrose, which is genetically modified, but why not throw in some talc, right? Talc causes cancer, and that's what Johnson Johnson's finally gotten sued about, and someone finally won. Vegetable oil, 
hell yeah, sounds pretty good, vegetable, but most likely they're calling that corn oil. And uh, hey, water, it's got some water, so that's pretty good. So another multivitamin that is just horrific. You can see how it duplicates those uh, ingredients too. And so you can see it in a little bit different way there. Now this is, uh, these are pickles. And uh, if you make your own pickles, which are super easy, especially fermented pickles, you would just take uh, cucumbers, put them in a jar with water and like a tablespoon of salt. And like I put mustard seed and there's a couple herbs and stuff you'd put in there, right? And then you would let that ferment on your uh, counter or you would uh, can them or whatever. That's pickles. So the first three ingredients in here, or four ingredients, cucumbers, water, vinegar, salt, that's all you need, right? You ferment them and then you can it. And that's it. You can make these at home super duper easy or you can buy them at the store. Now, they also add calcium chloride in there too. Um, then sodium bends away, and so we're back to that bends word again. So the bends in there is benzene from uh, the, the phlegm part of gasoline. So now we're gonna preserve with us with some cheap ass gasoline derivatives. And then natural flavors, that's kind of pickles, I think. I don't think you have to add flavors to pickles. I think the pickles are the flavors. But why not make them more flavorful and more picklish by adding pickle flavor? And then we have polysorbate 80. Now we saw this on the other ingredients, but I didn't point it out. Polysorbate used to be just like poly, um, oh, what's the other one? Um, Oh, shoot, I'll remember it in just a little bit. But the polysorbate used to be made from uh, animal fat. And so uh, now it's made from uh, toluene, which is paint thinner. So old school polysorbate was real stuff. Now it's just derived from paint thinner. Again, a little paint thinner, a little benzene in here. And then yellow number five, like we said before, decreases brain growth. So here you're buying pickles for your family that has the stuff that causes lymphoma and leukemia and decreases their brain growth. So the other option is buying pickles that don't have these ingredients. And uh, in the beginning, it's just reading labels. So you'll find those pickles. They uh, like a in Kansas, it's the ones with the white label on them. Um, and they just have like four ingredients and that's it. Just like they should be. So, and if you guys have like recommendations. Now, if you get Bubby's pickles, they're fermented. And so then they're full of probiotics. They have like a hundred times more probiotics than a supplement. But a, a narrower spectrum. But um, again, Bubby's is just fermented. You can make those yourself crazy just crazy and this is where I get really frustrated because I'm like just sometimes I just want like a sauce or something or something to dip my stuff in and like with uh, I like making uh, uh, shrimp sauce to eat with my gluten-free salmon patties that I make with uh, cilantro but then how do you get horseradish without crap so you can make your uh, shrimp sauce without crap right so if you get Bubby's brand of horseradish, it's got like four ingredients, it's real. But this thing, they make this horseradish with horseradish, water, vinegar, and there should be some salt. There's your salt, that's all you need. That's all you need. But they throw in some soybean oil in there to kind of make it a little fluffier, I'm sure, thicker. And then that soybean oil is genetically modified. So that's, and it's inflammatory. Then we have artificial flavors because apparently it's not horseradishy enough uh, without some artificial horseradish flavor, which is ridiculous. Uh, and so any artificial flavors, colors, smells, those are made out of coal tar. So you can take coal tar and make it smell or taste like things, and you can make up to 1,200% more profit by doing that, which is great. 
for the person that owns the company, horrible for the people that eat the food from the company. And then we have eggs. So, well, that's real at least, right? Uh, they're probably, you know, caged eggs, but at least it's real eggs. Sugar, which is from genetically modified corn. Uh, then we have sulfite. So this is great. You could preserve it with some ascorbic acid, malic acid, citric acid, something, even rosemary at this point. But why not just take sulfites, which are one of the most like allergenic things? Like this is what causes people to have those reactions to red wine because they preserve it with extra sulfites. So not naturally occurring sulfites like the French would use in a good wine, but added sulfites so we can get things to the market faster and make more money faster. So this is a horrific idea because sulfites are gonna trigger that person's eczema or irritable bowel or migraines. Then we have gums. And so uh, this is cellulose, which is sawdust mixed with some xanthan gum. And xanthan gum, even though it looks crazy, it's actually fine. So xanthan gum, guar gum, those are all perfectly fine. Oh. Um, and then um, citric acid. So they actually, they threw some citric acid in there. And then they went off the rails and they put some sodium benzoate in here, which we saw before. So again, we're back to benzene, which is gasoline. So we got some sulfites and some um, benzene in there. Some corn syrup, because you know, you get horseradish gotta taste sweet for some reason. And that again, corn syrup, especially high fructose corn syrup, but even agave, uh, is what causes high, uh, or sorry, what causes uh, fatty liver disease, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. So years ago, I couldn't figure out why my patients uh, didn't have uh, viral hepatitis, they didn't have alcoholic hepatitis, but they had these like liver enzymes that were chronically elevated as if something was going on. And then I took some coursework through Harvard uh, on non-alcoholic -al uh, fatty liver disease and non-alcoholic steatohepatitis, so NAFLDA and NASH. And the, the NASH one, the steatohepatitis, I mean, that's like cirrhosis of the liver caused by fatty liver. And the title, this was back in 2013 when, 2013 when I took this, it said an emerging epidemic. So back in 2013, it was the same place I was with other patients where it was like, what the hell's going on? Why are all these people having high liver enzymes without like the old school reasons? But we were able to actually uh, cause fatty liver disease and so much damage we could cause cirrhosis just merely by food ingredients. Like that's how bad everything had gotten by then. So then they had some mustard seed and then some uh, EDTA, which uh, eh, probably isn't the worst thing, especially compared to all this stuff. Mustard seed's super healthy. Eat all your seeds. So you could buy this chemical nightmare that causes cancer, or you could just get Bubby's uh, horseradish that doesn't have crap. And if you guys have other uh, brands that you like, let me know. And of course, we got something with the word protein on there because most Americans think we're protein deficient. So we got protein bars, uh, but the reality is nobody's protein deficient if they eat real food. So if you're a gorilla, it eats fruits and vegetables and greens. If you're a rhinoceros, it eats greens. 100% of all proteins just come from fruits, vegetables, greens. So vegans never have to worry about this at all because the animals we eat typically are vegans in the first place. So if you wanna eat a pig, most of them are vegans unless uh, you're in the deep south and you're trying to get rid of a body. So don't worry about that, but you can see that like new protein, which makes this sound really good. But if we look over here at the ingredients of this bad boy, we see Peanuts, all right, so we're pretty good. Almonds, awesome. Soy, damn it. So we look over here, there's no organic symbol. So this is genetically modified soy, 
but it's protein isolate. So again, it's not tofu or tempeh or edamame. This is genetically modified uh, Frankenstein crap. So something we didn't need, but somehow it makes it more profitable. Then we have chicory root. Now chicory root is really good. Like chicory coffee is great. And in fact, a lot of times people think of like dandelion root tea and chicory tea or chicory coffee as like, you know, hippie stuff. But if you guys remember uh, Bonanza, in that movie, or sorry, the TV show, uh, you had uh, Hoss, who Big Hoss was the big giant cowboy, and then I think Little John, and uh, who was uh, basically uh, McDreamy back uh, before McDreamy. And um, he would make Hoss some chicory coffee. So, back then, that was a tough guy drink. Then over here, we have sugar which again is just genetically modified uh, corn. And we look down here at the amount, at the very bottom here, we can see that. Um, this has six grams, and the rule of thumb is four grams equals one teaspoon. So that's uh, one and a half teaspoons of sugar, um, which is a lot. So one and a half per bar. And what is it? It's six, okay, so look at this though. It's six grams of sugar for every 40 grams of candy bar. <laughs> so, let's see, that'd be one, roughly one eighth of the candy bar is sugar. So let's see what other sugars we have in here too. So we have sugar, but then we have vegetable oil. Now, we don't have to worry about this being corn oil because it says palm kernel and palm canola or sorry, uh, palm oil, palm kernel oil, and canola. And this is an organic canola, and so that means that's uh, genetically modified canola. And canola, just so you know, is from rapeseed. So back in the day, if you're old enough, you, your parents used to buy rape oil, which I don't know where to go with that. Uh, but if you take the rape seeds, you make rape oil, so then people use rape oil. But then the rape oil caused um, heart disease because of a specific type of acid in it. So then you have the Canadian oil company make Canadian low acid, and that becomes canola. So then you have canola, but it's genetically modified, so people were uh, scoffing about that. So then they came out with organic low acid Canadian oil, which is organic canola. So that's fine if you get that. Uh, otherwise, try to stay away from canola. So this should cause heart disease. Or, I, I'm sorry, uh, yeah, canola. Um, no, it's just genetically modified. The old or the rape oil caused heart disease. And then roasted ses or sunflower seeds, that's good for you. Has sunflower oil from the sunflower seeds. Toasted coconut, that's amazing. And then we have whey protein. So they put whey protein in here to up the protein content, which is ridiculous in the first place. Uh, but the uh, whey protein is um, one of the most allergenic proteins as a waste product from cheese manufacturing. So used to, they'd throw this stuff in the river, uh, throw it out back, pour it behind in the creek. They didn't want this stuff uh, when you made cheese. And then, they figured out if we could sell waste products as new products, we can make even more money. So, why not convince people that they're protein deficient and then they have to eat our waste product and we can make tons of money. So, that's where you get whey protein uh, problems from. And if you look at that, it's 10 grams of protein. Uh, and for most people, really, 30 grams is all you need all day anyways. Um, I don't know why it only says 15%, but typically about 30 grams, that'll do you. And then we end up in sugar land. So we got allergens and genetically modified sugar, and then we have tapioca syrup, which is just sugar. So you take the yucca root and you can take out the sugar, and that's tapioca. You take out the fiber, that's cassava. So cassava is fine. Then we have high maltose corn syrup, which is 
going to end up causing fatty liver disease. Then we have fructose, which is from genetically modified corn and sugar. So we got, let's see here, sugar, 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 sugar. And then down here we have sugar plus sugar plus sugar. And then we have dextrose, which is sugar. And then rice, uh, starch is sugar. So like this is just like a whole bunch of different things that become sugar. Now the question is, does this sugar mean this sugar or all the things that become sugar later? So that's the real question. Do you have to count maltodextrin as a sugar because it's not technically sugar yet? Same thing with starch. Then we have vegetable glycerin, which they don't say what it is, so that's probably corn. And then uh, salt, which is fine. And then we have soy lecithin, so we're back to genetically modified um, uh, Frankenstein stuff. Dextrose, which is sugar. Baking soda, which is fine. Natural flavors, which is fine. So this whole thing is a nightmare, but you can get a kind bar or a lar bar, and it doesn't have all this toxic crap in there. And it's also full of protein if you're all worried about protein. So that's the crazy thing is we can get what we need out of this stuff. And here's Honey Smacks, which I don't know what the hell happened when I was a kid. But, you know, I was eating cookie crisp cereal, which is like insane. So you couldn't eat candy as a, a kid for breakfast, but you could eat cookie crisp, which is eating cookies. Like, it's ridiculous. So... Don't be fooled though, also with uh, healthy ones like that are gluten free. So I once, uh, I used to get my girls gluten free cereal. So again, we make these compromises like, okay, fine, you have cereal, but you have to eat this kind of cereal. And then that becomes normal. But the, the kind they ate had a llama on the front and then there's one with a little monkey on the front and they're gluten free, right? So I'm thinking, okay, these look healthy. But they have 11 grams, which is almost like three teaspoons of sugar. And so I'm like, is that normal? Is, is, is three teaspoons, is that a lot for cereal? So then I go to look at Frosted Flakes and Frosted Flakes cereal has 11 grams. Frosted freaking flakes that have sugar all over the front of them has the same amount of sugar as my stupid gluten-free healthy stuff. Quote unquote healthy, right? Same crap. So. I don't know. You know what? Oh, crap. So, you guys, I had my little uh, thing on so on here, so I couldn't see if anybody's posting stuff. So, I'll answer some of these questions later if we see them there. Uh, I couldn't see anything anybody's posting yet. All right. So, now let's look at Honey Smacks, which sounds healthy because it says honey on there. And, you know, Smacks are super healthy. I ate a lot of these as a kid. Oh my goodness. So the first ingredient we have is sugar, which is from genetically modified corn. Then we have wheat, which is uh, again, trick to cow wheat that since 1940s is radically different than real wheat. Uh, and it's horribly allergenic with lots of gluten in here. So we got sugar, we got gluten, we got dextrose, which again is another way of saying sugar. We actually have honey, but is this real honey or is this honey um, uh, something like, I don't know, was it 85% of honey is not real? 95%? Something like that. Um, so not sure if this is real honey or not. Hopefully it is. But that's sugar. So we got sugar, gluten, sugar, sugar. Sugar, gluten, sugar, sugar. It sounds healthy, right? Then we look at vegetable oil, which is corn oil, and we see the word hydronated and partially hydronated. These two words are how you know it has trans fats in there. So, trans fats, which then only cause heart disease. Then we have salt, all right, that's fine. Caramel color, so is this color derived from coal tar, which causes cancer, or is it derived from caramelized corn, which is uh, modified, or is it caramelized from uh, wheat, which is modified? Then we have our little soy lecithin, which is again, genetically modified um, Frankenstein thing. And why not throw in some paint thinner for your kids 
to really preserve this. Now, if you fed your kids paint thinner, you lose your kids. If a company does it, that's good business. Plus, it might be sugar, gluten, sugar, sugar, trans fat, and uh, genetically modified soy and paint thinner. But look at all the synthetic vitamins they add. That's awesome. Like, what the hell, America? Like, why are we all sick, fat, and dumb? Uh, I'm pretty sure this is what happens because of this. Then we have Power Aid because we need electrolyte drinks in America because uh, sitting on the couch and going outside is so extreme that we have to get extreme drinks to put our electrolytes back in. But what the hell does every other animal on earth use for electrolytes? Eating food and drinking water. That's it. You want real electrolytes for your kids? Make them eat an orange and drink some water. That's all you need. This stuff is bull crap. And when I told my cousin or my little nephew this, he was like, no, 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 it says Powerade. It's power, it makes you stronger. I was like, no, it's poison. It makes you sick. And he's like, no, it can't be. This says power on it. So that's even better. So with this one, we have water. So pretty healthy from the start. And then we have some citric acid, which makes it sour. So that's pretty good. A little salt. All right, so we got some electrolytes, got some potassium in there, magnesium chloride, which is the bad, uh, the least effective form of magnesium, and calcium, same thing. Really, citrates are better versions of those. But again, these are not supplement doses or real doses. They're just selling. Then we have natural flavors. So, sounds pretty good. Then we have sucralose, which is horribly toxic fake sugar. Then let's make it even worse by adding a acetaltame and anything with that aim on the end is formaldehyde. Now you might want to go home and make your own so you just take the flammable part of gasoline and you make paint thinner and then you turn the paint thinner into formaldehyde and you turn the formaldehyde into aspartame, acetaltame, neotame. Fake sugar. Diet stuff. Hell, it's got some vitamin B3. Basically, it's a supplement at this point. So it's got some crappy supplements. Your cyanocobalamin is made from cyanide. It's not going to kill you like cyanide, but it's not effective. So uh, copolamin, copolamin here, that is B12. So what's in front of it, though, is should be methyl at best. And then maybe hydro or something else, but not cyano. And then we have blue food coloring, so it decreases brain growth by 5,000%, like we said. So it makes us dumber. And it has some ascorbic acid for some flavor and some EDTA as a preservative. So horrifically toxic versus just eat an orange or an apple and drink some water. And then we have this, which I believe is a... Um, I want to say this is, um, oh, uh, baby formula. I think this is right. I was trying to figure out why I got this label, but I think this is a, a formula. So same kind of bull crap. We start off with water, then we got corn, and they even tell you what kind of maltodextrin it is, so we don't even have to guess. We said maltodextrin is sugar plus sugar plus sugar, so it's triple sugar made from genetically modified corn. And then we have sodium calcium caseinates, which again, casein and whey are the most allergenic uh, components from dairy. Then we have sucromalt, which sounds like it's something seriously made up, but sucrose is sugar, malt is sugar plus sugar, so it's kind of like this maltodextrin. Um, and then we have glycerin, which probably is okay. Soy protein isolates, which is genetically modified soy, Frankenstein stuff. Cocoa powder, that's pretty good. So cacao and cocoa are the same things. So in the jungle, you take your yellow fruit uh, and you make cocoa butter. Puree that up, make cocoa butter. If you take the little brown nibs, that's cacao or cacao, cacao. Uh, so that's healthy. But if you grind it up and roast it to 140 degrees, you get cocoa. 
So cocoa and cacao or cacao, those are perfectly fine. They're medicines, but they're very bitter. So nobody likes pure cacao or, or uh, cacao or cocoa. So then they add in sugar milk and then they make milk chocolate. So one's medicine, one is just sugar milk. Then they have fructose, which again we said is from dissolving corn. It's not fr freaking fructose is not fruit sugar when it's an ingredient list. Okay. Oh, thank you, Linda. Fructose that you see in ingredients causes high, uh, hypertension, it causes fatty liver, it causes disease, but fructose that's in an actual piece of fruit is perfectly fine, right? This is made from dissolving corn and acid. Safflowers, uh, safflowers uh, inflammatory oil, canola is genetically modified. This is inflammatory genetically modified oil. And then we have uh, magnet chloride and phosphate, Soy lecithin, which is genetically modified. Artificial flavors, which is petroleum. Um, carrageenan, which some people have problems with. It's a byproduct of uh, um, seaweed. But again, um, it's, it's because they take it out and put it in high amounts to basically make things more gelatinous. Now they use, uh, they got rid of carrageenan because they thought people had problems with it. Uh, and so then they started using things like um, algae, uh, which is makes a little bit thicker too, which should be fun. And then we have a sea fultain, which we said again is made from paint thinner. Whoops. Oh, there we go. So we have formaldehyde from paint thinner, from flammable part of gasoline to sweeten this up. We have fake sugar, and then we have our cancer and heart disease vitamin E. And then we have some little crappy synthetic vitamins. And then we get down to the bottom and same thing. At least has D3 in there. But this is just junk, it's terrible. This is horrible. And then Quaker oatmeal. So we have a couple more here. So this is strawberry, so it should have strawberries in there. If we look at this bad boy, we have oats, which is probably okay. You know. If if you have sensitivities to gluten, which most people do, you probably ought to get certified gluten-free. So we have oats, then we add sugar, which is genetically modified, and then we have a creaming agent, which is ridiculous, because uh, oats, all you have to do is soak them in water for a while, and you can heat them up, and they turn creamy. But our creaming agent is basically genetically modified corn, which is sugar plus sugar plus sugar, and then we have some oils, and then we have our away which we said is horribly allergenic and hell why not throw some caseinate in there too which is horribly allergenic flavored and colored fruit pieces that sounds legit but they're treated with sulfites which then again makes them cause migraines and uh, autoimmune flares and horrible stuff then we end up uh, with artificial strawberry flavor so the cream in this is horrific. The strawberries are horrific. It's just petroleum made to look and taste like strawberries. So we also have our red food coloring, which again causes all kinds of allergies, ADHD, but also decreases brain growth. Salt, which is fine. Guar gum, kind of like xanthan gum, perfectly fine. Artificial flavors made from petroleum. Some crappy uh, synthetic vitamins. And that's it. That's horrible, horribly toxic. But what you can do is you can take some uh, still cut oats, put a little bit of water in that bad boy, throw some raisins in there and some nuts, hell, cut up some strawberries, throw them in there, and that's real. That is simple, cheap, and real. <clears throat> then we have Taco Bell, which again, for you guys that uh, hated my post about um, Chick-fil-A because you can be toxic uh, fast food, but not if you're Chick-fil-A. Chick-fil-A is untouchable for some reason. So Taco Bell, as you know, is America's healthiest fast food uh, company. So that's pretty sketchy. So if we look at our bean burrito, so again, I. 
we all have this journey, right? And like, I grew up eating Taco Bell. So much Taco Bell. So much, like I have no idea. I mean, I did get cancer at 33. That was malignant. Probably shouldn't have survived, but I did, right? Uh, so, maybe this caught up to me a long time ago and now I'm better, but, oh my gosh, so much Taco Bell. And then Taco Bell farts, that's like the worst. All right, so our last thing here, talking about ingredients. We have Taco Bell burritos. So we have pinto beans, which is great. And again, making your own refried beans is awesome. Like it's just take your beans, put, even if you do a can, which isn't the best, put your can in there, put your uh, Chipotle uh, uh, Tabasco sauce in there, and then just put um, cumin in there and put onion powder and garlic powder and a little bit of turmeric in there and um, a little bit of salt. That's it, heat it up, then mash that up and that is real healthy, like refried beans. Like it's, and they taste great. So otherwise we have pinto beans and then we have genetically modified soy, which is trans fat free, but really probably not trans fat free, but they're making this with TBHQ, which is petroleum, and then throwing some citric acid to protect the flavors, which that's good. This is good. This is horrific. Then we have our seasoning blend Salt's fine, sugar, that's genetically modified. Uh, spices, I don't know what the hell a spice is. Um, beet powder, hey, at least that's real, right? Then we get to this word, autolyzed yeast. Autolyzed yeast is one of the 50 names for MSG, one of the most horrific chemicals that you can consume because it decreases brain neurite growth by 8,000%. Uh, MIT University uh, says that, or they published studies that show that as soon as that crosses the blood brain barrier, it causes instant brain cell death. And so they hide MSG in names like autolyzed yeast, yeast extract, tortula yeast, natural flavors. But now they'll just come out and just tell you that, right? So it also has gluten, which, of course, from the tortilla, I'm sure, but they actually put. Uh, I think gluten in there and then we have maltodextrin which is sugar plus sugar from corn potato and tapioca but corn is genetically modified inactive yeast which is probably brewer's yeast uh, which is Saccharomyces cerevisiae which is usually horribly allergenic uh, we do these food sensitivity tests all the time for the last 15 years and inactive yeast is one of the big ones corn flour which is genetically modified, natural flavors, which is what the hell is that? That's probably more MSG, uh, trellulose, which is sugar, and then modified cornstarch, which is genetically modified corn, and then silicon dioxide, cause everybody needs a little sand in their food. And then the hot sauce, same kind of situation here. So we have water, tomato paste, jalapenos, vinegar, salt, spices dehydrated onions. If you stop there, that's how you make your own hot sauce. That's it. That's all you need. In fact, Tabasco, that's pretty much it. Chipotle Tabasco is that plus some Chipotle. Xanthan gum, for the most part, should be fine. Acetic acid is made from dissolving corn, so that's your white vinegar. And then uh, we have potassium sorbate and sodium benzoate. So back to benzene, which is the flammable part of gasoline. Then we have yeast extract, which we said again is a code word for MSG, which is neurotoxic, learning disorders, attention deficit disorders, uh, all that. Natural flavors, which is probably MSG, and then soy lecithin, which is genetically modified uh, soy sludge. Then the cheese is probably the even though it's allergenic for most people, it's probably the only real thing on there except that anti-caking agent. Uh, and typically it's shredded cheese, so they're probably adding in uh, natomycin, which is an antibiotic. And then we have the burrito shell, uh, which I'm pretty sure you can just call it a wrap. I don't know, that seems like a sketchy ass name. So bleached white flour, or bleached wheat flour, right? Which is white flour. 
So that's uh, highly inflammatory gluten plus malted barley, which is gluten, plus uh, niacin, which is good, some uh, basically crappy synthetic vitamins and stuff in there. Then we have water, which is good, and then we have soybean oil, which is genetically modified. Then we have hydrogenated, which is trans fat, hydrogenated, partially hydrogenated means trans fat. And then monodiglycerides or monoglycerides, sometimes you'll see that mono or dye, uh, they used to be made from fats and then they learned that they can make them from um, uh, petroleum. So, most likely that's from petroleum. Then they have sugar, which is made from genetically modified corn. A little salt in there, some baking soda is fine. Fumic acid, fine. Um, sorbet, that's good. Or, you know, fine. The yeast in there is, again, it's probably Saccharomyces cerevisiae, which is actually one of the most allergenic ones. Molasses, you know, molasses is, uh, should be fairly healthy to supremely healthy. But molasses is made from uh, cane sugar, typically. So if you take cane sugar and you separate all the white stuff out, you get sucrose, which is table sugar. And then if you take the brown and black part that's left over, that's molasses. Not very sweet, but full of vitamins and minerals in there. Uh, so it should be super healthy. But this, again, is genetically modified, most likely. Dough conditioner, we got our monodiglycerides, so we're back to petroleum again. Wheat starch, which is gluten. Calcium carbonate, which is eh. Tocopherol is eh. Citric acid, eh. So, horribly toxic. Horribly toxic. And that again is our healthiest uh, food for our healthiest fast food place in America. And uh, again, don't eat at Chick-fil-A. Good Christians don't let Christians eat at Chick-fil-A. It's still the same bull crap. It's horribly toxic food, which then makes people sick, and then they can pray over them while they're sick. Does that make any sense? All that stuff is crap. So, we got a Trader Joe's in Wichita. You can get yourself fairly healthy, kind of instant food there. Uh, again, everything is, when we're dealing with kind of like um, ingredients, it's what I'm doing now, what's better, what's best, what's optimal. And I'm telling you, it sucks so badly to read labels in the beginning because you're just like, oh my God, why would they do this? Or what the hell is this word, right? So once you get used to it and you have your brands and you kind of know the simplicity, like really just looking for a handful of ingredients, that's all you need, then it becomes a hell of a lot easier. But holy crap, in the beginning, it is painful to go through and read labels but you have to do it. You're doing this for you, you're doing it for your family, um, and it's just an uphill battle sometimes, but you'll get, a, you'll get your kind of rhythm for it, and um, a lot of it's just kind of like, what the hell is this? So there's some good apps, I'm gonna leave you guys with this. So there's a couple good apps. One is InGred, like ingredients, it's for your phone, you can hover over the bark. Well, this one you hover over the ingredient list and it'll tell you what everything is in there. The other one is a healthy living app from ewg.org. That's a good one too. You can hover over the barcode and it'll pop up all the toxicity of that. Um, and then if you guys have any favorite apps, please post those, let us know. The app ones aren't always perfect, but because again, there's some people that are like, oh, benzene, that's fine. But no, I got a textbook from 1935 that says benzene causes leukemia. What the hell are we doing? And again, even with these additives, like, oh, what's a little paint thinner in your kid's food? But it's not just the food. It's the food, the drink, the snack, the every single meal that they eat is just constant derivatives of petroleum for greater profitability. So, don't beat yourself up. Start slow. Start looking. If it doesn't look right, it probably isn't right, but then there are some healthy things that are, you know, difficult words but still it's kind of like, eh that's not the worst thing it's those trigger words that are the worst of the worst in the beginning so hey i hope you guys like this uh this is episode 156 um and we did this live i think i want to say uh next week we have another show or another um thing 
Let's see, OptiLife. Yeah, so next uh, Thursday, not this coming one, but next one, uh, on the 7th of November, we have Interpreting Your Own Labs. So that'll be really exciting. I'll bring extra labs for you guys if you don't have labs, but we'll go through that basic like complete blood count, and thyroid test, all that kind of stuff. And so you can really understand what the hell is going on with your labs because like most docs, when you get your labs back, it's all fine, but that's not true. We have these ranges that are set by uh, what's the average expectation we see for a population of people that are dumb, fat, and sick. You don't want to be like everybody else in America. So we want to deal with what are called functional ranges, right? Optimal ranges. Where should I be? So that's where you look at thyroid and the, it might be this wide and you're like right here and this doc's like, oh, you're fine. You're like, I'm not fine. And then they put them on antidepressants, but it's not fine. They should be in this little space here. And so interpreting your own lab values is a wonderful kind of like uh, introduction into kind of figuring out what your labs mean to you. Um, and I used to teach a postdoctoral program uh, several years ago, or no, actually the um, postgrad continuing education um, for doctors, and I would teach them applied nutrition and clinical chemistry. So we would talk about how to interpret lab values. And I really thought I was going to get my butt chewed out by these doctors trying to tell them how to read labs and what they mean and how to interpret them and how to correlate them together. And then I found out nobody knows anything about labs. So then it was like, oh, okay, I'm the smart guy in the room. So this be easy so that's what we have and then uh, next week's topic uh, maybe we'll do chemicals in food uh, or sorry chemicals in uh, products so that's a whole different little beast but we can sit there and go through like some shampoos laundry detergents and kind of figure out what the hell do these things mean um, if you feel like this is meaningful for you guys I thank you so much for watching I hope you really enjoyed it and you found uh, some, uh, it doesn't just piss you off and you're like, damn it, Patrick, now I have to learn all this new stuff. So. All right. Thank you guys for, uh, for watching. Really appreciate it. Post your questions and, and especially uh, if you guys have good suggestions for like products for people, replacement products that are healthy, uh, post that too, okay? So we're all helping each other here. Bye, you guys.